Okay, so this is a video recording uh, instruction for how to draw a climograph, right? How to draw the climograph. So what you saw earlier was the data set that we we're sketching. So I want to remind you, climograph basically is a combination of a line graph representing your temperature and a bar graph representing your rainfall. So we've actually sketched, uh, you should have sketched the line and bar graph together in class uh, sep on separate on separate parts of the full scale paper. Now we're going to do the combination uh, on one piece of paper. Now you note, you do not need to use graph paper. There are times where you will be only given full scale paper or even blank paper with a box given to sketch within the box itself. So as we mentioned earlier in class, very importantly, you need to have the title of your graph. So the title actually tells your reader what exactly you're going to sketch. So for this graph we've written down, we're going to do the climograph of town A. After you've written down the title, the other thing is to take a look at the data set again to decide the scale that you need to put down, right? So for temperature, for the line graph, uh, the, y -ax the y axis that we're going to look at ranges from 26.5 to 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the range is actually not very big. Uh, to make sure that the graph can be seen clearly, we will try to adopt a slightly larger scale. So when you look at the space that is given to you, right, one of the things I'm considering here is uh, originally I was looking at 1 cm for 1 degree, then I realized that I have actually got more than enough space. If I do a contraction and I start from 26 degrees, I would be able to fit up to 30, 35 degrees in this space here. And I only need to end at 30 because the highest recording I have of temperature is 30 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick uh, with the contraction, two centimeters to represent one degree Celsius. Okay, similarly on the x-axis, we need to fit 12 months because for both the average temperature and the average rainfall, we're looking at a total of 12 months. Now, coincidentally, in my paper here that I'm using, I actually have uh, squares. I have grids on this paper. So what I'm doing is later on, I've decided that I will use two grid space to represent the width of one bar so that will allow me to hold the width of the bar consistent throughout in between the bars i will use one grid empty spacing so what i'm doing now is i'm actually marking out the markings for temperature right every two centimeters to represent one degree okay uh, depending on once again depending on the scale or the, the range of the temperature that you are dealing with, you may have to adjust this to better suit the needs of your the graph that you are sketching. Okay, in this particular case, it just happens that I am able to fit this in. Okay, so uh, you can forward, you can fast forward the video, as you will be able to see me sketch the entire line graph after I mark out my months, right? So because I'm doing two uh, grid spacing to represent the width, I will pick the point in between for my temperature to mark out my cross sections for the temperature. So you see what I'm doing now is I'm marking evenly the points where I will mark out the intersection for temperature so that I can craft my line graph clearly. Okay, there are several reminders while we are while running through this. Uh, in class, some of you actually asked, do I need to join the, the first point for the line graph to the y-axis y -axis itself? Uh, no, right? It's because we're, we're plotting only from January all the way until December. So your first, the start of your line graph should only be at January. Okay. Uh, the contraction, once again, allows you to truncate and, rem and not have to worry about the rest of the scale that you're not using. So I'm, if you see later on, I will actually do the, trun the truncation, the contraction, sorry, for the other y-axis as well, for rainfall. Okay, so I will let you take a look. You can fast forward through uh, and look very carefully. Actually, I'm just plotting out all the different points. Uh, the other thing to note once again is uh, for the points of the line graph, as advised, it is better to use a cross because it clearly marks out the point of intersection that you're looking at. Okay? It's also easier to join up. If you draw a circle, uh, then again, you need to decide where exactly is the middle of that circle because your line should be joining the middle of circles. Okay, So the easiest way is to actually mark out with a cross like what I'm showing you here. So I'm marking out for each of these months based on the data set that I have. 
Okay, so if you see that there's a uh, two months that have the same data later on when I draw the line, it will be together. It will be a flat line. Okay, there will be no variation in temperature between those two months. Okay, now what I'm doing at this point here is I'm actually adding in the rainfall. So you look at the rainfall uh, readings that we have, the lowest is the 90, the highest is the 220, right? So in this case, I will no longer be able to take uh, 2 centimeters to represent 10 units of rainfall, 10 mm of rainfall. I'm going to stick with 1 cm to represent 10 mm of rainfall. With the contraction, I'm going to start at 90, right? 90 and I after counting I realized I will have enough space to end at 220 actually in this particular case I can draw the other y-axis higher for rainfall and I can actually go even higher than 220 right so uh, I'm zooming in, zooming in so you can see with I'm putting in a contraction on this side again so the first point of reference I'm going to mark out will be 90 90 and every centimeter above I will increase by uh, 10 units so the final one right at the bottom of the tip of the second y-axis for rainfall will be a marking for 220 mm of rainfall, which is the one that was recorded for August in Town A. So note, I am making the markings, I'm writing down the readings along my other y-axis. Now for rainfall, Please remember, rainfall chart, we are actually going to draw a bar graph. Okay, a simple bar graph. Key notes about the bar graph, the columns have to be of equal width. In between columns, you have to have the equal spacing. So this has to look very, very neat. You also have to use a ruler when you're doing the bar graph. So essentially, when you're doing your tests and exams, it is important you have a couple of these equipment with you. You have your pencil, you have a ruler, you have an eraser. Should you make a mistake, you can erase the mistake away. So note very carefully what I'm doing now. I'm drawing the outlines of the bar. So I've created the bar for January. Okay, January. So I'm going to move on and, and do for the rest of the months until the very end where I will have completed it for January to December the rainfall for Town A.
This final step I'm adding now is to make the bars clearer. I'm choosing to use a highlighter. Of course, you can use to choose to leave it blank as it is. Uh, if it's on this particular piece of paper here, it's quite clear. Uh, without the highlighter, I'm still able to see clearly where the bars are. Uh, alternatively, you can use color pencil. You can do your normal shading, right? But uh, remember, the shading has to be the same shading for all the bars because you're representing the same item. If you're using a highlighter, it has to be the same color. The moment you change color, it will indicate to the examiner you're trying to show that there's a difference in this particular item you're reading. So uh, if it's the same component, rainfall, you should only use the same way of indicating the bars. Okay, so um, if you look carefully, and by the time I'm done with this, it will be much clearer than it was left blank. And that is the main purpose of doing the highlight. So I can see very clearly where is the dry season, where is the wet season that Town A actually experiences. So here it is, we're done. Uh, key things to check. The graphs are all done using a ruler, neatly. Right, your two axes are labeled with unit of measure, mm for rainfall and degrees Celsius for temperature. Title of the graph is given. X-axis at the bottom is also properly labeled with all the months. And finally, what I'm adding now is a legend. Because I have two graphs there, I did not label my graphs on the climograph itself. So I'm providing a legend to clearly let the marker know that the part with the line refers to temperature, the part with the bars refer to rainfall. And that will be the final thing I will need to add for this question. And this will form the answer. Climographs. With this, you are able to now proceed on to sketch the climograph as part of your homework. Enjoy. Good luck.